Good morning and welcome to Morning Gospel Fuel with Mr. G. It is Saturday, September 25th, the 25th Saturday of Ordinary Time, and it is the feast day of Saints Louis Martin and Marie Exeli Gurin, who are the parents of Saint Therese of Lisieux, who is a very popular, more modern saint, um, whose feast day we'll be celebrating on October 1st. But her parents are also saints, and they were beatified. Or sorry, they were canonized in the year 2015, which is not that long ago, in which they became the first spouses in the church's history to be canonized as a couple. So, and I think it's very interesting. So I was doing some research on that. And the father, Louis, was intending to be a monk, but he was rejected because he couldn't pass Latin. I can sympathize with him on that. And then Zelie, the mother, his wife, wanted to become a nun, but she was turned away uh, by the Sisters of Charity of St. Vincent de Paul because of respiratory difficulties and recurring headaches. So then they ended up meeting, and she prayed to God to give her many children and that they would all be consecrated to God. So then her and Louis met, and they ended up, they got married. I think they only knew each other for three months, and they got married. And they lived celibately for ten months after their marriage. So, no sexual sexual relations for ten months after they mar- after their marriage. And they decided to consummate, meaning make love for the first time after those ten months, but only through the encouragement of their spiritual director. Like, can you imagine that? How unheard of is that in today's society? And then they would later on go on to have nine children, in which only five of those, all daughters, would survive infancy. Um, and what's interesting is out of those nine children, all seven of them have the first name of Marie, and then two of them have the first name of Joseph. Then they just had different middle names. So Mary and Joseph. How how awesome is that? And so, um, yeah, that's just impressive. Then if you think of like, of Louis, the dad, that means he didn't get to carry on the family name like so many fathers would like um, for for the boys of their family. Um, So like I said, nine children, five survived, meaning four passed away. At infancy, and they passed away at six years old, one year old, one year old, and then just a few months. So this family, this couple, went through some hardship, and so, man, that's pretty cool. I just learned about them literally today. So now, it's pretty cool. So I don't, I couldn't find what they're the patron saint of, besides the fact that they're the first couple to be canonized as saints together as a couple. But so I'd imagine they're probably the patron saint of couples. But don't take my word for that. Maybe you can look it up. Maybe you can find it out better than I can. Anyway, we should get to the, get to the gospel. Today's gospel is from Luke chapter 9, verses 43b through 45. Let's begin in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Amen. While they were all amazed at his every deed, he said to his disciples, Pay attention to what I am telling you. The Son of Man is to be handed over to men. But they did not understand this saying. Its meaning was hidden from them, so that they should not understand it. And they were afraid to ask him about this saying. All right, so we've got Jesus telling the, telling the disciples once again, the second time, about his passion, the upcoming passion, suffering, death, everything that's going to take place for Jesus. And, you know, the disciples typically always ask questions, but this is one that they just can't wrap their head around. Um, because it's good to ask questions. We need to ask questions um, to God. You know, why is this happening? Why what's the, why did that happen? What what are you pl- planning this for? Why are we enduring this? You know, and all this other stuff. You know, when are you going to reveal everything to me? Um, but the and the but the disciples here, even though they were confused and they didn't really like it, um, they they continue to stay stay true um, to Jesus and just just have this blind faith and trust that. You know, they've seen enough of what Jesus has done that we have 
no other option but to follow him. Uh, but they were also patient with it. Um, you know, because it says, um, but they did not understand this meaning. Its meaning was hidden for them from them so that they should understand it. So they should so that they should not understand it. But they eventually did understand it um, after the passion, death, and resurrection um, about Jesus. And of course, through Pentecost, never Jesus breathed the Holy Spirit into them and said, hey, go, go forth and spread the gospel. And so they had to demonstrate much patience, the, the virtue of patience, which we've heard that all the time. You know, patience is a virtue. And so I'm going to focus on patience here, um, because it also ties in well with the with these, with the our pa saints of the day, Saint Louis Martin and Saint Marie Exelie Garant, who had to, who had also had patience after they were turned down from the monastery, and turned down from the convent of what they were originally wanting to do as being a monk and a nun, and then they found out you know, gave us one of the doctors of the church in Saint Therese of Sioux, in which all five of their daughters became nuns. Um, it's just simply amazing. Um, so there was a lot of patience within that. So the Catholic Church has seven capital virtues to defeat the seven deadly sins. And one of those virtues is patience to combat the deadly sin of envy. So I'm going to read the definition of patience here and then what it's supposed to defeat, and then that, that'll be our, cha our challenge. But patience is the ability to endure difficult circumstances. Patience may involve perseverance in the face of delay, tolerance of, of provocation without responding in disrespect or anger. So it's the level of endurance that one can have before showing disrespect. And then envy is what patience combats. And envy is an emotion which occurs when a person lacks another's superior equality or quality or achievement or possession or either desires it or wishes that the other lacked it. Um, and Aristotle, he defined envy as pain at the sight of another's good fortune, stirred by those who have what we ought to have. So very similar to jealousy, um, but not exactly quite the same. So with all that being said, you know, all of us go through something. Every single one of us, me, you, we all. And we are all called to have the patience of the disciples and also the patience of Jesus because eventually things will be revealed. So we've got to have that patience and trust that God will, will reveal what we have, what he needs to to us in his time. Um, so that's the challenge, is be patient in whatever it is that you are currently waiting for. And just continue to persevere in prayer. So have a great day. God bless. Keep it real. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Spirit, amen.